Welcome everyone to the first ever world qualifying series between the LEC and the LCS live from Seoul, South Korea. The regional rivalry is teaching us or reaching another climax today as only one team will survive and move on to the actual world championship. You can see the Golden Guardians setting up on stage right now over in Lowell Park, the home of the LCK. And our boys, the BDS, about to put the smack down on North America once more. Excuse Thankfully me. today, I'm going to be joined by at least one analyst from each region, the losing region, Raz from the LCS, as well as the winning region, Gulborg from the LEC. GB, what could possibly go wrong Nothing, today? nothing could possibly go wrong. We got this in the back, BDS 3-0. We're looking at it. But Raz, how are you feeling today? Feeling pretty good. I feel like you guys are just trying to get this out because you know how the day's going to end. Listen, I saw Reddit, and the explicit request of the people was to be as biased and inflammatory as possible. I'm just giving the people what they want. So let's talk about why we are here and what exactly we are doing. The World Qualifier Series is a best of five match between the LEC's fourth seed team BDS and the LCS's fourth seed, the Golden Guardians. The winner of today's series will advance to the actual World 2023 play-in stage with our face-off against VCS the second seed Team Wales on Wednesday and loser they end their uh, theoretical world run before it even started this isn't world yet world starts tomorrow this is the spicy prelude the uh, the, the, the amuse bouche if you will yeah what's already really cool about this play-ins bracket is that we're already seeing so many teams that we saw at MSI so often we talk about a region story but we actually get to talk about teams versus teams from these specific stories going up against each other you know Gam losing to R7 potential for them to find victory uh, again and redemption depending on how the bracket pa pa pass off but also really measuring the strength of these regions and teams coming back now when they also will go up against either Golden Guardians or BDS later. I agree. It always feels bad when you start a tournament or end a tournament saying they'll be back stronger, etc. And then oftentimes like another team take that spot, right? Yeah. You have to start from ground uh, the ground up. But this time around, yeah, as an example being loud, that team coming in on a three-peat looking stronger than ever. These are the things that I, I feel like I live for. That I, I'm going to be excited to see I these mean, I, I am looking forward to potential rematches. I also love the fact that whoever wins today makes it to their first World Championship ever, and they'll be facing off against Team Wales, both of the teams making their World Championship debut. So that's all to come later on in the week. As you can tell, we're having a little bit of fun. The energy here in the studio is quite um, spicy. So let's spice up this regional rival a little bit more. I've tasked both of my analysts to present a short presentation on why their team is going to win. Now, it's important to know neither analyst has seen the other's presentation. I've kept it secret. So I want to ask everyone who's watching on Twitch chat right now on who you think is going to win this matchup. And I sincerely hope you adjust your votes based on the presentations. So Rez, seeing as though I'm expecting you guys to lose. I think I'd love you to teach me about the Golden Guardians. Everyone reminder at home, twitch.tv slash Riot Games, that's where you vote. Rez, Golden Guardians presentation, go. Ignorance is bliss, quick shot, because all of you guys have been talking for a little bit. You guys have no idea, and I'm here to educate you. Let's start from the very start for Golden Guardians as a team in Spring Split, the fact that they went to the finals of the LCS. So as we swipe and get to see what we see from Golden Guardians, an amazing moment that they have here. No one really expected it, but they, they continued finals. that. Exactly. So that was beautiful from them. And then... They were a, a, a base, basically a greater sum of their parts, but then they go into Summer Split winning individual accolades. Licorice and Huhi getting first team all pro. Huhi the first time in his career being able to hit it. And then second team all pro for River and Gori and Stixe. Gori and River. All five oh, players. Exactly. First and second team all pro. Actually, my memory is lapsing a little bit. Goldberg, did, did BDS get any, any all pro accolades? <laughs> Don't worry no, about it. No, no they did not. They Zero did not rest. The answer to that they one. did not, yes. yes exactly. Yes, so, they did not. Yeah, so success across the board. And as we move on to the next slide, question for me is how did it all happen? <laughs> Because not only are we talking analytically, are we talking about just how we've seen them play on the rift? It's the blessings as well. As long as you rub this head, don't worry about that. As long as you rub <laughs> this head, you get to see blessings from this team. A coaching staff, basically winning coaching staff for the split in summer split because of the continuity they had. BDS, did they win anything from that? No, they didn't. They didn't. So then we go on to the next slide, man. Because what we saw in MSI oh. was the culmination of all that success. Winning that game versus BLG. <laughs> Are we taking Guardians losses play. now? As listen, a win? Listen, they got a game in I, that series. This is not very nice. GG and GG. Um, this means that my transfer property is Golden Guard is better than Gen G, right? That's what you're saying? I love okay. that you're following next. this. I love right. that you're following. Can BDS do this? I got to push you along. Let's get to the next slide. All right. And we move on to the next one, and this is where it all matters. The notable points for these individual players. Everyone wants to look at the top lane, right? You love to see Licorice versus Adam. Licorice, man, like, 
<laughs> that was big black licorice in action, and it left a sour taste in 369's mouth as we go into the next one for Adam. Oh, man. I actually don't remember this one all too well. It was a double solo kill, but Adam was on the receiving end. Look at Raz. He added the tear. Yes, it was actually quite sad. Really for sad, bro. Goldberg, uh, question for you. Uh, how do you reckon that tasted? <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, I love my salty licorice as well, so that's what I'm ready for okay, later so then, on listen, anyway. So, so, I think okay. that's, that's where we are. I'm going to move us along to the there. next one. GP, I think you take the floor. All let's right, about all BDS. right. Let's get it going. That was cool on Golden Guardians. You had some accomplishments coming through. We're not just gamers at BDS. We're so much more. So let's get the first light going, okay? You're not going up against your average gamer. You're going up against professional golfers. You're going up against Air Force pilots. You're going up against the police. You're going up against paramedics. When you play BDS, you you play peak human performance, <laughs> not just game game performance. That's cool. You have full-time gamers. You have part-time gamers. No, it's we got cool. everything. We got everything. We do everything. But also, uh, in the beginning, when it, when I saw we were facing NA, I I, I just thought it wasn't it was not announced who we were playing yet. So I actually had to Google what that was. And uh, Raz, if I move to the next slide, oh, no. NA uh, English is not my first language. Could you please read the dictionary of it's, what it's, NA it's is? It's actually here? it's actually written there. Near Airport is known as the fastest region to arrive at the airport. Since they gave up on LOL World Championship, they are investing in speed runs. I don't want to read this! Go on, go I'm on! I'm reading this! Uh, in particular, on. they are current world record holders at airport any percentage and airport Two. no wins. And world I records. will have you know that that can be broken today. They can lose already before they get to Worlds. <laughs> there is a world record that can be broken Spicy. with zero wins against from North America. Let's move this on. So let's then let's get on. into the matchup, actually, because you're talking about licorice, right? We got a Giga Chat versus a single piece of licorice. I'll have you know, when I was a kid in Denmark, I devoured this in less than a minute when my parents fed it to me. What do you think this guy's gonna do to it? There's not even any point in looking at the rest of it. So in conclusion of this PowerPoint, oh, it's just gonna be a straight <laughs> BDS 3-0, baby! That's what I'm talking about! Oh my word! Okay, Raz, any remarks to that one? No. I got nothing! Okay, let's take a second to cool off. Let's take a second to cool off. I wanna know what everyone's voting for in chat. What was the percentage? I didn't see that on purpose. 70% in favor of Golden Guardians. That's what I'm talking and about. Rez. That's what I'm talking about. So we've heard from the analysts, we've heard from the fans at home. It's time to hear from the players themselves. Let's tune in to some trash talk from Golden Guardians of BDS. Put your shirt back on. No. <laughs> what was what BDS awesome. in for? Uh, boosted dumb suckers. <laughs> what? I mean, what? you know, like, exactly. first of all, he's like full of Twitter game. I, I'm not sure why. And also people like to kind of create a rivalry between me and him, but I actually don't get why. Like, we're really not from the same scale, you know. Like, like tomorrow when we'll just meet, there's just not going to be a single matchup positive for him. Like, he'll oh. just get destroyed and he won't talk ever again. The point. I, love it. Um, I mean, even the EU teams are rooting for us. And they, no, we're not. We're so, gonna win, so. Wait, which teams are rooting? Yeah. Who sold us out? I saw Broken Blade tweet that he was rooting I mean, for BDS. It would be funny if like, a guy that played in LCK and LPL got uh, an LCK MVP who <laughs> lost to a bunch of nobodies. It would be what? quite uh, funny, to be honest. Oh, that is one of... That is one of the harshest things I've ever heard a player say live on broadcast. Take a second, let's react react. Uh, okay. Trash talk from the players. Obviously, it's spicy. I can't believe BB and G2 sold out BDS. Raz, thoughts before we dive into some more specifics. We need more stuff like that. That's all I'm saying. Well, hopefully we have some throughout the day. Uh, GB, thoughts before we dive into the pre-match? No, I mean, it's great when players get into it. Obviously, it's just banter, but there's a lot on the line for them as well. So I love it when they get out there and actually get a bit spicy. And I'll say this to you as well. I think both of these teams respectively, especially on social media and at least externally facing, they're willing to have a bit of fun with this. They're willing to play around. So let's dive into the meat and potatoes of today's matchup. And let's take a look at the introduction for both Adam, his international appearance, alongside the rest of BDS, which is going to be incredibly low, as well as the Golden Guardians. Rez, when we take a look at these individual players and we look at how many matches they've played on in the international stage, how many events they've appeared. You can see on screen behind you, three international appears, 45 games, 449, 117. In contrast, we have six games and one appearance. I mean, experience playing on this type of stage in front of this type of audience is hugely in favor of the Golden Guardians. And this is something that always catches off, gu off guard. When we go into an MSI, it was the same thing because the individual players for Golden Guardians is definitely s different from the branding of Golden Guardians. Right? Golden Guardians is a brand, never made it to Worlds. Uh, didn't make it to MSI historically until that moment, but the players themselves, uh, 
even just specifically singling out Stixie, that man who went to MSI in Shanghai, had that amazing moment uh, against RNG. They've been on the stage under a lot of pressure and were able to deliver. Yeah, but I think as well on the side of BDS, right? I mean, Adam's not even going to be the guy who's actually rallying them and giving that extra veteran experience because that's not him. You're looking at a guy like Crowny, and even though he's got zero international appearances, he's been here for a long time. He's been through a lot as well. I think hopefully they've had learnings from Spring as well if they start losing games to Golden Guardians where they won't fully just default and lose the entire series, but then they can actually come back together and realize that this is a good meta for us right now. We can actually pull this off. Let's talk about both teams um, in terms of, you know, being in this position, neither Golden Guardians nor BDS were expected to be here. I think in terms of both teams, there's a lot of parallels in their journey. They both may have peaked. I use this term a little loosely. Let's say earlier in the year, both teams kind of fell off towards summer, towards the qualification for World Championship, coming in as fourth seeds. I mean, Gulborg, can BDS not only surprise both us in terms of performance, but even Golden Guardians? Because as a team, the way they play the game is also a little bit non-traditional. No, absolutely. And I think that's also the factor coming into the day and the thing where people are hoping that BDS can get an ed edge through that. Yeah. Even though Adam plays a game where he gets lane prior, he doesn't really use it for himself with the champion pool that he's got. I think where I'm looking, and I'm a bit worried, is the mid jungle on BDS. When I look at Shion, and when I look at Nuke, they're obviously some of the newer guys coming into it, and they're playing against some of the strongest players as well on Golden Guardians when they go up against uh, River and Gori. And I think that's fair. I actually remember the playoffs in which they fell, uh, specifically Golden Guardians, fell off to Team Liquid to put themselves in this position. It was actually inconsistencies from Gori, somebody that carried them uh, to this position where they were Honestly, one of the strongest mid-jungle duos in the LCS, but they come into game five, technically game six, because they have to replay yeah. that game. Um, and it was a disaster for Gori. So as long as the consistency is there in the mid-jungle, then it should be good. Should be, is the... Uh, well, listen, letter. I want to move this on. We've only got about three minutes before we head into the very first World's Qualifying Series. And because both of my lovely analysts had a... Um, <laughs> It's a tasteful joke <laughs> yes. between Licorice and Adam. Let's dive into the specific matchup because I think this could be one of the more pivotal impacts if I think Adam or Licorice pop off. Raz, I'll come to you first. Um, what fear do you have for Licorice, like, pooping the bed against Adam? Maybe the champion pool, maybe the play style. Like, is there any concerns on your side? For the champion pool, for sure. When you're, when Licorice is going into an unfamiliar matchup, there are going to be problems. You're going to fall behind. And in fact, I, I would say my expectation... Ban the Darius. I don't want to see it, especially if we're flexing Poppy. You really don't have to. You can let <laughs> so we're banned. You don't have to, bro. Don't worry about it. And then when they, when they played up against, specifically BDS, playing up against Fnatic in the series that they lost, I thought the best matchup that Adam had was the Jax matchup. So he's actually really adept at just traditional matchups, something that people try and overhype the weird picks that he has, but if he goes back to the Jax and Renekton, he does perform. So that's something that I want people to be aware of. And that's really where I'm hoping that Adam would excel, actually, because it, well, as I said earlier, like with champions like these, when you see them in solo queue, you best be knowing they're never joining your team. But Adam plays it differently. He actually wants to get lane priority, so he can either move down towards Dragon and get Drake priority, or actually move in on the enemy jungler and try and move in with Shio. And that's kind of what I'm hoping we'll see here. I yeah. want to see them attack River. I want to see them have prior from the top lane. But let's be honest, that's a very real scenario where we'll also just see them play their shared champion pool where Licorice was getting Cassante, Adam will lock in Renekton, and then we'll just have a trade upstairs where they're just trading plating, or Adam will get plating on the Renekton. And we don't want to see that. We Hopefully don't not. See that. I mean, I would love to see Adam on the Olaf. I would love to see him on some of the signature picks, um, because I think that's really where they can gain an edge. So, uh, Raz, we've got 90 seconds left. Yes. I'm going to ask you to give me a prediction. Who will win, what the score will be, and why you're making that prediction. I have Golden Guardians winning this one 3-1. <laughs> if there's a 1 in there and a Golden Guardians there, I think your shirt is perfect. You should rip that off. <laughs> but uh, the reason why I have that is I give Gold, uh, BDS a single game because I think they're a really traditional front-to-back team that will play around Crowny and do a pretty good job at that. And if they can mix them up in the top side of the match, maybe we see a Darius go through. Um, then it's going to be a little tough to deal with. Are you, are you even asking I, me? I know the score. I know prediction. Tell me why they're going to win. I mean, without I think... Full <laughs> without full hopium. Without full hopium. Okay, without full hopium, I possible. think we're for sure at four games, right? But um, I think that we're looking at an edge where Adam can gain it in the top lane. But I also think that Crowny is a stronger player than Stixie is. I think that that's where I'm really looking at them getting agency in the mid to late game. If they can actually play around some of the strengths that they had earlier, where they get their Drake Prowl going, where we saw them step up in summer, where they mimic the formula to success. That's where I start seeing them getting edge against Golden Guardians. And if they can snowball the game from there, make Golden Guardians uncomfortable because they're going to be playing against a play style that you can't really practice against. 
against. Like, it is very BDS specific, and that's why I'm hoping to get the edge. Well, I really, really hope BDS surprise today. I hope we get a good series, and I am very hopeful that we'll have a lot more fun throughout the day. If you are watching, reminder, this is the World Qualifying Series. The winner today advances to the World's Playing Stage. We'll have face-off against Team Wales on Wednesday. You can win three of the five next following games. And to bring us into this matchup, let's head to the castles. Dracos, Dagda, and Mark with the Z. Mark with <laughs> a Z, brothers, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to I think what is going to be the greatest best of five of the year. Hands down. Easy. No yeah. question in my mind. This cast is going to be biased yeah. by popular demand. And in order to red. facilitate that, I will be the neutral party. I am the Switzerland. <laughs> he is the yeah. particular yeah. Let's, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Please. You're going to get some elbows <laughs> and collateral <laughs> damage. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of going to be the vibe for the day. Obviously, Golden Guardians versus BDS. Uh, we both did a podcast to die before, if you haven't checked them out. Um, right now, from the perspective here, it's uh, we're kind of curious to see. BDS, high ceiling, but we want to see if they can reach it. That's the more objective perspective from a regional fandom perspective, Dag. I think it's safe to say it's a quick 3-0, yes? Yeah, BDS, easy 3-0. I mean, how the hell is Licorice going to deal with Adam? I mean, you saw GB as well. Like, how do you try and argue against that sort of European representation? I thought he was going to fight Raz at one point, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I mean, it's a big regional rivalry. I know people will try and convince you that there's more important series to play after this, like the entire rest of the world tournament, which this is technically not a part of. Yeah. I disagree with all of them. No. I think that this is, for NA and EU, the most important series that they will play yep. because this will define a lot of bragging rights for the entire rest of the year in Reddit threads. If you lose this, you have no leg to stand on. But that's why they had to put this first, right? Because it's like, technically, this isn't world. So they're like, look, we got to have this one first or else everyone's just going to be talking about this. They're just waiting for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. They're kind of... Uh... They're just, you know, they're giving us the medicine for the NA and EU fans. They know what Worlds <laughs> usually means for our respective regions recently. We'll just have to see if this is going to give us the fix that we so desperately need. Obviously playing in Law Park today. Love to see the Korean yeah, fans in house. Yeah. And BDS. The boys from the LEC, if you missed the season, you heard uh, the PowerPoint presentations at the start. Obviously, up and down season, a team that when they looked good, looked great, but struggled to find that form. They don't look that scary. Looking at them on stage here, I'm not that worried. <laughs> what what are you what are you just waiting for balls to come back and be jacked on yeah. stage? Is that how you define? <laughs> I mean, the is Faker is has the fitness program. Here's Everyone comes out you. swole, just, you, just ready. Is, is Faker a man of intimidating stature? Is yeah, that he, what makes he, Faker he eats scary? broccoli and rolls on stage? That's, that's what makes me quiver yeah, in my yeah, boots. Yeah, 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 I didn't see bad. anyone do that from BDS. I, I, so I, I think forgot about that. I mean, the last time we saw balls do anything impressive was on Darius, and then we just stole that one out of his Oh no! We're already in your head. It's full circle. Oh boy, the goal, Golden Guardians had a, you're talking about up and down year for both these teams, it yep. felt like for BDS, peaking kind of more in the middle. That was Golden Guardians in a lot of ways too, making spring split finals for the first time in their history, going through their first international MSI. You know, not winning a best of five against one of the Eastern teams, but taking a game off BLG was still considered impressive to a lot of people. Yeah. And then they had a pretty strong summer that just kind of fell apart in the final playoff push where they ended up losing to Team Liquid in the loser's bracket, which was a big shock. Gory had an uncharacteristic performance. So this is a team that people are unsure of how they're going to perform after after a month off and a disappointing last viewing. And I think when we compare and contrast uh, similar stories in terms of highs and lows and maybe inconsistency for both squads, the reason why people are often erring in favor of Golden Guardians is just the veterancy of this team. Mm -hmm. There's just more faith and there's more long-term track record to prove that these guys can bounce back, that they can get back to the heights that they were at. BDS remains a question mark because again, in spring, in a single meta, they were fantastic. They were a great team. They team fought incredibly well. They played around crowning incredibly well, but they've struggled to replicate that. And the meta hasn't always supported that as we've gotten further into the year. I mean, I think it's also the case of the finals in spring, right? Where everyone was like, oh my God, BDS are going to do it. They're actually going to be able to take a, a victory for themselves. And then they kind of fell apart at the last hurdle. So I think that's kind of the big question mark coming into this. But especially as you say, the lack of experience on an international stage, apart from Adam, we'll have to see now if they can try and step up to the mark and guarantee themselves that slot in Worlds. Yeah, it was absolutely a disaster. Astros reverse sweep that came in. Then, of course, you have Mad Lions 1647, you know, as a result of that. <laughs> Could have been avoided okay, in an alternate right, universe. You know that never happens <laughs> if just BDS won that catching, series. Is this a catching strays yeah. kind of day? Dude, I'm, I got the guns cocked. I'm ready to fire. You ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I the greatest strapped. thing your region has ever done was beat IG so you could lose to G2 in the finals. Just we, to be clear we, we died so you could live. So you, we gave you the <laughs> best international lie. finals. I, to be fair, I'm not going to lie. That was, you did take a bullet for, for the West The 9-1 the <laughs> IG coming out of that group stage that Team Liquid miraculously beat. Everyone just breathed a sigh of relief. <laughs> I appreciate you shut out at like strays and bad lines and then just shot yourself immediately. <laughs> Dude, I'm not aiming real good right now. Let me tell you, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning. We're just firing. We're popping off, not thinking about where they're going. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
On brand. <laughs> <laughs> America, start the bar. <laughs> Yeehaw. Here we are into picks and bans. Olaf taken off the board. Respect again for Adam. If you don't know, Olaf Darius Renekton, kind of the quintessential picks that made him popular in the LFL. Has a deeper champion pool, but that's the signature. Jarvan, Rumble, Zaya. Again, champions that were generally pretty strong the last time we saw them in the meta. Jarvan, a rumored strong scrim pick right now. Also a, a staple for uh, River, one of his best champions. And so if you're just getting rid of some game one staples, like you said, some for, for Adam, some for River there as well. I will say, though, this is looking pretty standard to what we saw at the end of summer. I thought we'd have a bit of a mix with, like, you know, Senna potentially coming in. I Ooh. thought we'd see things like the Orian and the Zir a bit of higher priority, but not going to be the case instead. It's going to be the Talia keeping that flex pick open. And I don't I don't think we'll get in this first rotation. I think there's an awful lot of picks you want to go for outside of that. But uh, yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's not looking too dissimilar, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, that was the biggest question looking at the patch. Obviously, there's a lot of speculation in terms of which champions could rise up as other meta priority picks are taken down. Talia remaining that flex pick gives her a lot of agency. Oriana is the pick right now that Ooh. seems to be on paper one of the strongest just because of the chain buffs she has received this entire year. Yeah, Oriana sliding up people's rankings. Nuke preferring standard control mages in a lot of ways. Feels like the Azirs, the Casios, yeah. Oriana slots right in there most likely. And so this will be, I think, a lot of the focal point for the North American fans watching is if Gori can bounce back from from a weak performance and try and get some advantages over Nuke, who will probably be leaning more towards the control mages. Yeah, and as well, leaning more towards those team fights, right? You know, the BDS likes to try and play for these dragons in the early stages. Having that mage that you can try and use that in those early stages to play for those big team fights is going to be a nice little setup. But uh, looks like he might be going back towards a bit of an aggressive mid lane. Talia jungle confirmed oh. now, and we've got the Cassandra now. Double I don't flex. Think they're not going to flex. They, they, they both play Yone and they both play Cassante. Okay, so I, I was aware, but I wasn't sure if they're willing to play the Cassante mid lane. I could see how it would be solid into the Orianna, but I feel like after all the nerfs, not quite mm. as powerful as it once was. Dude, we don't read patch notes in the NA. We can't read. <laughs> Dude, we can talk about patch I notes. appreciate that you've decided, like, the way that you get not flamed for being biased in this cast, you're like, I'm just going to trash everyone. everyone. Yeah. I know who I am, all right? <laughs> and literally, it is not it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised to see the Maokai coming back into this because uh, I know a lot of people are talking about kind of more carry oriented junglers, but with the Talia as well having a great way uh, clear in the jungle, you're going to be able to pick up the pace. And I think Maokai just might struggle a little bit against the Talia here. So, But it is more Sheo style of, hey, look, I'm going to try and play to stop and shut down and get vision and play more of a facilitator here rather than being a carry myself. And I was just going to say that I think right now, Golden Guardians are obviously drafting themselves into a situation where they have champions that are very strong in specific scenarios outside of Talia, who I think is universally strong. And on the opposite side, for BDS, it's safe. It's stable. It's going to scale well, which is kind of, again, when they were at their best, scaling is what they did. The question now is, what do they bring out from Crowny? And is this a good thing that they're drafting stable, or is it going to be a problem if something like this Yone pops off? Yeah, this is Golden Guardians, when they were at their best, kind of bread and butter, taking flex picks, doing interesting things in the draft, and being aggressive with them, having very high combined kills per minute, a lot of three-man roams toward mid lane to kind of key off Gory's aggressive champions. And that was what was kind of lacking in the playoffs. So we'll see if that can bounce back here. On the draft, just in terms of the changes, I know there's a lot of conversation about practice time in Korea. Sure. Where there was this belief that Golden Guardians was going to get way more. I think they showed up like a day or there's two before. There's very little difference. There's yeah. very little difference in scrim time. And this is the first series that we're going to see on this new patch for Worlds. And it might be people taking it a little cautious for yeah. their first game going to staples like the Maokai. Yeah, I'm curious to see, though, what the game plan is here. Because I was looking at a lot of AD carry bans. Zaya, Ezreal, Kalista. Now all taken off the board. Kalista definitely starting to rise up in priority in that bottom lane, getting that bit aggressive. Oh, so okay. we've seen things like Caitlyn and Lucian as well, those mm. other lane bullies starting to come through. and But uh, Kaisa is there as kind of the other one that's kind of slipped through from Meta's past. But it means you do have opportunities here to try and go for Ooh. some sort of counter pick if you'd like to. And this oh. is, okay. Support of Mumu versus uh, Huyi. One of his kind of pocket picks that he's yeah. played a couple times, but not that seen by other teams. Yeah, it was obviously really popular last Worlds, I believe, with MF, but very yeah. briefly at the start of the tournament, fell off very quickly. Once people figured out how to play against it, I think it lost a lot of steam, but still overall an impactful pick. You know how powerful the ultimate could be. And to be honest, I like what Golden Guardians are doing with this composition. You have a lot of champions who want to dive into the back line. Oh Kaisa can just immediately <laughs> follow. And we have, dude, yeah, we have scale the most forever. <laughs> quintessentials BDS. And here's the thing, EU fans, I'm going to tell you right now, if they're going to win this game, it's taken 30 to 40 minutes. Yeah. You, might, you can come back in 40 minutes. You, can, you, can, you know, you come back in 40 minutes if the game's still not going. It's not looking good. But <laughs> Golden Guardians on the other side are going to have to try to blow this wide open because Crowny is an excellent late game AD carry. If there's anyone on this team you can rely on to carry a game when we get past two, three items, it is Crowny. 
and I think that that's going to be a tall task if Golden Guardians cannot blow this game open. Yeah, Lebrov on his most played from Summer Split, eight games over Khan, grabbing that one, so that's a good look for them. And yeah, this is the most like standard draft you can possibly imagine. Basically, Renekton yeah. topside, Maokai jungle, Orianna, Sivir, just a Sivir comp with some engage with the Rakan as well. Yeah. Uh, going up against crazy AD focus. The Kaisa build that's most popular right now is actually more of a uh, lethality yeah. build and not yeah. the kind of AP Kaisa that you saw before. We'll see where he ends up going because they otherwise are seeming to be low on magic damage beyond the Talia. Yeah, I mean, it does feel like, though, you've got what you're kind of looking for for Golden Guardians, yeah. right? They like to try and play around this mid-jungle. you got a super strong mid-jungle you can play for, especially, like, Orianna. She doesn't really want to try and go for these skirmishes early in the yeah. game. Like, I know even when we look at the builds that we're seeing from Orianna, she tends to go more towards, like, the Ludens Echo Shadow Flame versus what it would have been the more heavy scaling items that we used to see in, like, you'd go for a tier item and then you'd kind of become strong at, like, two and a half to three items. She does come online a little bit sooner, but uh, I think if you're looking at Golden Guardians trying to play through this mid-jungle, seems to be your way forward in this game. Feels like, feels like that's the case. I think the person that people want to keep their eye on is Adam. That was who, r worldwide, people who were kind of talking the most about an individual, individual player in this series. Uh, even in the LCK, Cloud Tomblar was talking about him. Wolf likes him. There's a lot of people who like watching his play style. And so we'll have to see if he can get some mind games in on Golden Guardians early on. Level 1s for BDS are also pretty crazy compared to a lot of the things that we see more standard in North America. Yeah, she's notorious in scrims for trying anything and everything at level 1. One of the most hated players to scrim against because of it. Uh, El Yoyo complaining on the 4 podcast earlier this year. Finds it miserable. We'll see if River is in the same situation. The dive, obviously, very confident. And Kobe, specifically, was very confident in River's ability to individually outplay. And certainly, when you have a carry jungler like Talia, if you want to show off, if you want to individually be the difference maker, this is a champion that can let you do it. But I think it works well against BDS, because you know the Shale wants to go towards Sejuani, Maokai, these kind of things. So I think it's a good call here from Golden Guardians. But again, it's as, as you say, Shale wants to try and get in your face, try and get that vision down in your jungle, and just stop you from being able to interact on the map. So I'm curious to see how BDS get that going here against Guardians. I think it's a really interesting clash of the two jungle styles as well. Just across the board with this team is so many yeah. different ways to talk about it because River is one of the most notorious camp skipping, showing up in your lane level two from the most awkward angle possible kind of champions. And uh, Talia being a more tempo focused kind of style is something that you do want to get eyes on early because he'll go for a level two flick back on you out of nowhere if any of his lanes have set up, which, you know, a lot of them actually do here. And it's interesting because I think with players like, uh, you know, Maorang not doing as well this year, EU fans have been missing out on a lot of the level two psychotic <laughs> plays. Yeah, yeah. Like we, we still get it, but we don't have a quintessential psycho jungler that's very successful in LEC right now. So we'll see if BDS can adapt. But again, I think that it, clean, teams have clearly decided not to match fire with fire. They are, it is fire versus ice as much as is humanly possible. On the top side, level two for Adam, just trying to get this wave pushed in. We'll see how this matchup shapes up as we get later and later into the game. Kasante obviously just repeatedly, repeatedly nerfed, but still just remains relevant because of how powerful that kit is. Yeah. I think in this situation as well, like the ability for them to try and go for uh Try and go for team fights as well. It's going to be a big one. The Kassans are going to work out well. I think you've got this great setup with like Huhi going in, getting that ultimate off, and then trying to set up alongside like River with the flick back. So I think when you come into these fights, it's going to be very difficult for BDS if they're not kind of keeping themselves in check. But Shao starting to make his way in towards the mid lane here. Level three. Gori has to be a little bit careful. The flash in immediately. Gori gonna get some decent damage down. Gori needs to get out of there. Gori's dead. He's gonna run for his life, but he has to come back. First blood for the LEC, for BDS in the mid lane. I mean, it was only a matter of time, lads. The ADS already <laughs> off to a great start. I, I could have uh, gone longer yeah. than three minutes, <laughs> matter of time. Jesus, I thought that would be, you know, a little bit slower for us. Uh, Gory having maybe some of the same struggles we were seeing in playoffs here, just uh, not tracking where Shea was. He did that full top side clear and just hadn't gone to the bomb side of the map yet, so maybe a little surprised to see that. And I like the aggressiveness. Just insta flash W, get that guaranteed CC and kill nice and easy. Yeah, I mean, Gory at least didn't blow anything, so maybe when Shao comes back, he'll have a better chance. But uh, nice start here for BDS, and that's kind of what we're talking about, right? Shao is a guy who kind of preemptively gets into a position to try and shut down any sort of aggression you go for. We we're talking about the mid-jungle for Golden Guardians, and immediately nuke off to a good start with that early setup in the Dark Seal now for himself. And again, when we talk about a scaling team finding early advantages, it's so massive, because while normally we look at Golden Guardians to be pretty heavily favored in some of these early skirmishes, just with the raw amount of damage, with the Amumu kind of setup that they have, uh, things get so much easier when you're able to build a sizable gold advantage. And I'm on the top side. Should be okay here. Can double dash through, but obviously the Talia Unraveled Earth can be incredibly disruptive. Playing safe. Adam giving the respect necessary here not to get caught out. There is Gory 
Trading back a little bit more in the mid lane. Obviously, the big thing about Yone is even if he falls behind, you know, you get boots two, you get one item. This champion scales so incredibly well that small disadvantages don't matter as much. Yeah, and I think for the Golden Guardian's team comp, while it does have a lot of individual playmaking, it's really going to turn online at six around some of these neutral objective fights where they can try and find these big combinations with their ultimates. The obviously Yone one, the Amumu ultimate. Uh, seeing if you can get some of the gold lead back through there, because if you're just going standard laning and Shale's finding these kills on and off, you're going to be in a lot of trouble come 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, and I think that's where we're going to start to see it, especially like Rift Herald and that kind of stuff at the eight minute mark. I feel like you've actually got a decent opportunity there for Golden Guardians to try and play off of Yone being strong, Cassante having good opportunities as well. Like you are up against Ornekton who tends to thrive in those scenarios, but like Orianna isn't going to be that strong at that stage. Um, and I don't even think you're going to get much of an opportunity to be honest for Crowny to try and make his way up towards that top yeah. side as well. So in its 3v3 scenario, give that edge to Golden Guardians. Certainly. And especially if they're able to get set up first. Right now, Licorice obviously struggling to keep Pryo in the lane. The sustain of Renekton early on can be pretty frustrating to deal with. But if Talia's there first, if you get to lay down the Unraveled Earth, so many of Golden Guardians champions just are going to have a hard time approaching these fights. Bottom side of the map, and kind of everywhere, it's really quiet, folks. There, yeah. We had that one gank. People are going to fish for ganks now, but until Herald spawns, I think, at eight minutes, there's just not two points on the map, really, for both sides to play for. And I imagine they're just going to trade objectives, if I'm honest, at the pace that we're going. Yeah. It's, it's very possible for BDS to say, great, first blood in our pocket, sack these first couple objectives, keep that scaling going. Looks like that might be the plan for them. And I got to say, I'm not shocked. This is a very high stakes game for both these teams. You talk about BDS being young, never yeah. making it to uh, international play. Technically, this is international play, but not uh, worlds or anything like that. So sure. for Golden Guardians, also never making worlds. I think there's a lot of pressure on both these teams. And it's pretty easy to be the first team playing on this patch at worlds. Tons of people watching and having a little bit slower of a game one. Well, on top side, Adam's going to be able to grab a quick plate. Let's use the TP. Uh oh, mean lane. Uh -oh. Nuke needs to be careful here, but here comes Shio. The ulti out now. Going to take Gore to safety. Forced to use the ultimate before a fight, though. Could cost him, but able to get out. Very lucky. The pushback on the Maokai smash actually gave him the clearance Shock on. Shockwave! Nuke walking down. No mana. Clockwork wind up. Sorry, oh, what did he give him Mark? It! Sorry, Mark. Can you, can you tell me what happened with the... the now going to try to beat up River. <laughs> oh, no! Kobe in shambles! <laughs> All of NA in shambles, man. Not a great look to the start of this game. Gory dropping down. Oh, no. Okay. All right, so, sorry. I'm trying to be the neutral party, but it's leaking out. Mark, yeah. it's getting bad Get fast. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Let's go. I'm, I'm in my comfort zone, actually. I yeah, swear. Three. Oh, yeah, because it's 3-0 already for BDS. That's very <laughs> oh, really comfortable, no. right? Oh, God. Uh, uh, BDS this is the dragon the setup. I mean, we'll see the replay. We can see maybe what went wrong at some point. On the top side, Adam. Already got one, now wants to continue to follow up. Using the Dominus, wants to full commit here. Licorice can land the pullback, that's one dash through. He's gonna have another one, the pullback there. Adam can, I believe, dice to follow the slice, taking his time here. Maybe it has expired. And Licorice gonna be able to make it out, but forced to use the ultimate as well, so. Still huge for BDS in this early game. We're talking about the scaling, we're talking about, oh, let's see if they can get to 20 minutes. Well, they can also just kill everyone and get the neutral objectives themselves. Here, Gory, I was talking about the, the Arcane Smash, moving him out of range so that the Yone ultimate could still go off and then Shao's W follows him in range. But I didn't think afterwards Gory would just walk back up and die with his flash up. <laughs> so I, I, I just, I didn't see the game the same way, I guess, in that yeah. situation. My bad. Look, if I want to be empathetic here, I've used the strategy in solo queue many times where you die to bait your opponent into a false sense of security for plays like this. Just a shot. Never mind. All right. <laughs> Snap what side are you on, Dracos? <laughs> All right, come on, man. We, well, we, when you play yeah, Yone in Yasuo, yeah. you either go 10-0 yeah. power spike or 0-10. Yeah, he fair. died first blood. He's committed now to the 0-10 playthrough. Yeah. yeah. I will say, though, like, I do like that Shea was starting to play through this one, like, in mid lane. But even, like, this is what you got to expect from Adam. Like, the fact he's roaming down to get these plays, like, you do have to watch out for it. But I think we're kind of seeing what we expected, right? Early Dragon going to BDS. They're going to trade that for Rift Herald on top side. They know they don't really have control. So just looking for plates for a Sivir on the bottom side instead. And this definitely feels like a lot of the times the best version of BDS where they can win some fights early as we see a contest actually coming through for this Rift Earl. Oh, a little bit difficult here. Licorice, no ultimate river. Gonna throw back the Unreal Earth. They just got the damage. This deal comes out. Down mm -hmm. goes the jungler. Mm -hmm. Top laner mm -hmm. next on the list. Flash up to safety, but in goes Adam. Calling the meek here. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, he's been to Denmark. He knows what licorice tastes like, and it uh, it tastes good. Do you need a hug, Mark? No. Are you okay? No, no, no. Is it all right? One Roll game. them into a false sense of security. <laughs> Lose one game to give them false hope. It's these old CLG meme classic image. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think ultimately for BDS fans, they can rejoice a little bit because BDS are playing a lot of what made them so successful in spring. They're steady, they're scaling, they're still making plays in the early game. They're still focused on getting these objectives. Uh, and they're showing up individually, which across the board is the perfect checklist you want. And for Golden Guardians fans, I think it's probably frustrating because what you believed, if you believed in Golden Guardians, was we weren't going to get playoff GG. We were going to get the refined version. It was going to work out. Hold that thought here is who he's coming along to the bottom side and Mumu going in. There's just no way Crowny gets out. He's got the cleanse. River now coming through as well. The kill getting We're donated board, over to Stixie. <laughs> Does that feel good, Mark? <laughs> I had to get it out. I don't know how many more of those I'm getting, dude. I got to put like 10 kills of energy into that one. <laughs> I mean, look, it's a good setup. Crowny overextended, but uh, I mean, Shale absolutely on form in this one. Like, this is kind of the Shale that we got in spring that made us so hyped from coming in. Didn't get to see it as much towards the end of the year, but. We got to see inklings of it at the end of season finals, and now again, showing up massively here, getting that steal, setting up the kills. Shao is on form coming into today. Yeah, and it's nice uh, punish kill on the flip side of the map, finding Crowley slightly overextended, trying to get some turret plate damage down after winning on the top side. So it's a nice consolation prize, but at the end of the day, the fact that you get the Rift Herald taken away after Golden Guardians had committed time to that, you get the kills, everything is going so well for them on the top side. And it was one of the parts of the map that I think was the most contentious when you heard people talking about how you thought it would go. Is Adam a genius or is he crazy? You know, which of the two? is that shale how great is he when he has to play around topside so much and so far everything's come up exactly how bds wants controlling gory in the early game they have the roams from adam to find the cleanup kill in that mid lane he's been all over the map as well everything seems to be uh looking really good for them yeah right now bds sitting pretty have the luxury of scaling on their side as well at least when we look to the the simple perspective that is front to back team fights most certainly but often the easiest one to reference golden guardians sixes are through they made a play on the bottom side of the map who he, when his ult is up and available, we can imagine to fish for another play here. Because again, even without, even at small dis disadvantages, the potential for playmaking on this Golden, Go Golden Guardians lineup is massive. Should lead to at least a few more kills if they can find the angles. Yeah, I mean, you can see the amount of vision that's been invested by BDS on this bottom side. They really want to make sure that they're able to play around this bot end and try and find success. Shao was thinking of using that Rift Herald bot side, couldn't really find the Nin, so he's now going to move it in mid lane instead and just try and snowball this Orianna even further. Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. Plates going down in every single lane at the same time for BDS. They have CS leads in every single lane as well. They've had the kill advantage and they have a lot of map control now, getting tons of wars down the bot side of the map. They also have some on the top side to make sure they can track River and not fall prey to any of these kinds of ganks. Yeah. Also, the fact, the Andrew's Anguish already completed. Like, this Orianna is so accelerated. It's kind of disgusting. You so. guys should stop building items for a little bit and give us a chance to catch up. It's kind of unfair <laughs> that you have Mystics and we don't. I thought Riot was about competitive integrity. What is this? <laughs> I mean, in Europe, the shops aren't even open yet. So you gotta play by, like, the time zone, right? Oh, <laughs> well, okay. Uhi in a decent angle here, he spotted out, but Shio gonna get a nice knockback still, the curse of the sad mummy coming in. We're gonna get the flick back, massive damage on the jungler, and another kill donated over to Stixay. Licorice immediately gonna get the cancel, big potential moment here, coming in for the side of the Golden Guardians, but Stixay gonna get taken down by New Gory off to the side, completely whiffs, now forced to snap back here. Where's the follow-up? Adam now gonna win the 1v1, Licorice denies the TP, but it costs him his life. Uhi now trying to body block the platform from Nuke. Nuke on form today, playing like he did in the season final. Oh, it looks so good until it didn't. I saw the cancel on like, oh boy, we have definitely overextended, but BDS taking those early advantages and really hammering them home there. And as well as you say, like, this is what we were kind of alluding to, was like, this kind of feels like a meta for Nuke, and he's popping off in this one. Yeah, you can see, nice interrupt by Shao makes them have to commit a lot of resources to find this kill. That's almost everything to instantly destroy him. And then the pincer comes in from Crowny and Nuke at the same time. Nice re-engage by Lebrov to find these targets and then force them to scatter before Gory can even get involved. And while it's a nice interrupt by Licorice, you do lose that 1v1, so cost him his own life to try and stop uh, Adam from getting involved in the playoffs still went BDS's way. And this is where BDS are most dangerous. They're winning fights on that bottom side. They're just getting second dragon, as you can see in the uh, picture in picture there. And now they're going to be like, okay, well, Golden Guardians, what are you going to do? You got to come and fight us now. You got to try and prevent us getting this third, fourth dragon. But you're not really in a position to when we've got this big Orianna. Crowny's now picking up what he needs as well. And when you come to team fights, like that ultimate from the Melkai is so difficult to deal with when you're such short range. And the thing is, too, the later and later we get into this game, they're just going to be able to have such clean control of an objective. You've got the Maokai, you've got the Saplings, you've got the Maokai Ultimate, and for a lot of these champions, they're great divers. They're great divers when they've got an angle, when they don't have to walk face first into a Maokai, when they're not behind in gold. So, so much of what Golden Guardians wanted to do with this composition 
is is going to be shut down by the fact that BDS have any kind of advantage. They're going to be able to get objective set up first, and certainly because they have such a large advantage at this stage of the game. That's where I was going to go a little bit uh, earlier with the early game for them is while they are not like this usually insane early game team, they have won a number of them where they get early objective control, get a couple kills in their back pocket, and because they already also draft scaling, it just jump starts you so much further to their team fighting where they are also very, very good. So this is one of those games where, you know, Rounder Dragon Fighter 2 maybe a full send a couple more team fights for Golden Guardians, but already it's kind of hard to not have your mind looking at game two when you're 6k down against a full scaling team, kind of. Yeah. yeah. You should probably send it the main team instead of the academy team. That might help, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just giving them some extra rest. You know, oh, they're, yeah, they're getting yeah. used to the Korean time zone, I'm sure, or something. Remind me, this is your like basically your second seed, right? That's what that's I heard from the dive. That's that's some old old school thinking though. We we NRG is actually definitely the best team and TL is our third best and yeah. Golden Guardians fell off for sure. <laughs> Ready to disown them after I, a single I'm, I'm game one loss. I'm, I'm nervous that I'm gonna have to be you next game. I mean, it's gonna be me and Dag to be like, yeah, you know. Yeah, this uh, is, you, you know, know, what's funny is every time I come over to Europe to do like an EU versus NA game, and this was like last year at MSI, I did some of the G2 ones. And we're like, yeah, we're gonna like talk smack and have really fun, and then G2 just like destroyed us and railed us. I was like, yeah, I can't really fight back, guys. To be fair, Mad Lions EG was the same. Can we get a close? That's series? true. I did get to cast that one, and that was also a rail. And now here we are, not looking very good. Kind of, it's not. We need we need it to be close, or it just feels guys feels mean. Let's go five games. Let's give the fans something to enjoy. Yeah, you know, if you're a European fan, you woke up at five six o'clock to watch this game. Don't don't yeah. three zero them. Yeah. Let other people wake up and enjoy it. <laughs> to be fair, if you do three zero them, they'll be able to get to work on time. So you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Or you can even watch the entire series before work. You know? Hey, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just over a bowl of cereal. <laughs> on, the lunch, on the lunch break, put it at 2x speed through the whole series. Yeah. <laughs> it is looking tough. And again, I think when we talk about scaling, it's important to be clear here. Renekton's not a bad laner. Orianna's not a bad laner. Sivir yeah. and Akaisa isn't a bad lane either. So I think the big window of opportunity we're hoping to see from Golden Guardians was around six, was around these are the objectives because of what their alts can bring to the table, their characters can bring to the table in these skirmishes. And they just didn't get a chance to do that. They were already behind by the time those opportunities came up. Yeah, I think that's the big one. Like, coming into the next one, if Gory can try and just keep it a little bit safer, like, get early vision down to stop Shale, having them influence in mid, I think this could be a very different game. So, I think it kind of just snowballed out of control, but it still means he should have a decent opportunity to just bounce back in game two. Yeah, hopefully game two is a, is a, a new look for, for them. But I will say for the BDS side, they didn't do anything crazy, which you sometimes seen them We're do. trying to help you, Mark. I know, right? but I, to... I'm, I'm, I'm looking at both <laughs> sides well, well, here. Wait a I'm, I'm, I'm an obje un objective, unbiased analyst. You're it's... telling me right now that someone has level three ganked mid lane as Maokai with Flash W before? You're telling me that's not crazy? I think Shea was the first human being to ever consider to ever that have possibility. Done that, yeah. To combine both the Flash We've button never seen and that the before. W that, was, that was an S tier kind of thing. <laughs> Shea, what was that? My, my look point at the moves, is, look at the points. <laughs> my point was, they didn't do any of their, their level one stuff where they yeah, can get kind of crazy. I mean, Adam didn't pick one of his weirder champions. Like, this is... It's pretty much vanilla ice cream the game. <laughs> and vanilla's great. It's the foundation for countless delicious flavors. <laughs> Cookie dough, etc. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I know what you're saying. And that, I think that for Golden Guardians, the, the concern here for me, if I'm a Golden Guardians fan at this point, is this feels like a Golden Guardians kind of composition. And when this hasn't worked, what else do you have? Is this just a first shot, a Hail Mary, like let's try something weird? Or is this what has been working in scrims? G generally speaking, Golden Guardians are a very diverse team. They can play multiple play styles. They have different champions. And so I don't think that this is like a one shot. This is all we got. If this fails, then we're just going to run it back two more games and this is all we can do. So this is a, a bread and butter kind of composition with a lot of heavy dive and focus on engage. Sure. Uh, but to be fair, like we said, in playoffs, they were struggling and it was Gory who was getting uh, beaten up a little bit in some of these series. So it is concerning to see in the first game that he is running into that problem. He is someone who has had some problems, you could say, potentially with choking in some high-pressure situations, both in the PCS a long time ago uh, in some finals, as well as now that there was pressure on them in summer, losing in some of these series. I also think it's like, because you end up with that much mid-pressure coming through from BDS, it kind of shut down the person that I was really excited for in Golden Guardians, which was Huhi. Like, Huhi's been so good at, like, roaming mid, making early plays, like, getting out on the map, but it feels like we just haven't really had a chance. I mean, he was first all-pro team as well. Well, right, like I was expecting to see a lot of movement out from him, but I think with Crowny and Labrov having a ton of push and bot, and then just how poorly mid has gone, it feels like kind of the early setup that Golden Guardians have been successful with hasn't been there. Yeah, and I think that because the lanes fell behind so soon, they just had prio across the board. I mean, Adam got so many plates, four or five, I think, at the end of the day. Yeah. And at this stage, you just 
you can't really move on the map. It's going to cost you so much in terms of just raw gold value. And for BDS, they don't need to do anything fancy at this stage of the game. They're, they've got pressure where they want it. They can set up for objectives first. If they play it slow and take their time and are diligent about vision control, it's very hard for Golden Guardians to find an angle. And correct me if I'm wrong, but generally speaking, BDS was not the team to burger flip Barons from ahead no. and throw 10k gold leads. No, I'm real sorry. No, no, that's not how it goes. They do I, do I got any... So okay, see the three beat? dragons okay, are well. at the top? That's, that's their game. They're just going to go and fight you, Dragon, and then it's like, yeah. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> no, I okay. think they'll throw. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay, man. Look, sometimes in game Look, one, get in bread game and butter yeah, compositions you become mom spaghetti compositions very soon, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a little nerfs. Just got to get it out. I mean, clearly you just need to ban Renekton, Maokai, Orianna, Sivir, and, and Rakan in game five. Yeah, sure. Game two. And that's what your five bands are for. Really? Yes. <laughs> the exact that's composition how, they play. You're, you're a former coach. That's how <laughs> drafting works in League of Legends. You just of ban what, according to Reddit, absolutely. The thing that won was the problem, so you should have banned that instead of whatever opportunity cost is. I've never heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> it always feels just on the cusp of personal with you, Mark, and I enjoy that immensely. It's like, are you referencing something <laughs> specific? Adam pulled back. But he's a beefy boy, and in come the cats. Uh -oh. mm, and GG is just going to get shredded through his sticks on the backside. Instantly, LeBron goes in. The shock wave combo. BDS from start to finish taking control of this game. Doing it in style now. As they break into the base of the Golden Guardians. This could just be the end. Are we going to get a Dancing Herald? Probably not. It's got 90 HP. But the thought, fact that I had to ask that question says a lot about this game one. I think they're going to go for Wait it, though. Wait a second. Dancing Herald. I got to say, this is a statement. No. This is a statement. It's gone. All right. And it's still a statement game. At least it's post 20 minutes, all right? BDS, At least it's something. <laughs> striking first in the World Qualifier Series. Are you awake, Europe? It's the time to be alive! Doubters! You can still doubt. It's only game one. But <laughs> we're feeling it here. We woke up 4 a.m. But damn, we're awake now. I'll tell you that much. Except for Mark. Mark is sad. But... <laughs> nah, I'm chilling, dude. That was a great game. I had a lot of fun watching that one. BDS coming out game one. Guns firing, feeling good. woo -hoo! Yeehaw, partner! <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Yeah, they definitely uh, they, they did some work in that game. I gotta say, Shale looked incredible. Yeah. I think the mid lane yeah. matchup, Nuke was someone who I think people were saying, oh, can he handle Gory? Easily. Yeah. Easily One of Quickshot's favorite statements is, keep it simple, stupid, K-I-S-S. -S. Yeah. And uh, sometimes, like... It's just the best way forward. I liked what Golden Guardians brought to the table. I was honestly sweating in picks and bans because I was like, if they get a lead early game, this is going to be so good at never giving BDS an opportunity. But credit to BDS, winning in isolation across so many matchups. Gory a little bit over eager in some contexts, I think to say. Um, and it just made it easy for BDS to take over the game. Again, though, I want to go back to Mark's point. Like, I think Shale, fantastic. Like, he was one of the big question marks coming in today. It's like, what performance did we get from? And then Nuke looking very comfortable in this Oriana. I actually do think that's probably a bat we're going to see in the next one. Yeah, I also think that just the fact that they are the younger team of the two to come out with some momentum is going to be huge. Yeah. And not being nervous, not losing game one, how do you bounce back? You get to keep yeah. feeling like, hey, we played standard. We smoked them. So we don't need to change anything. The pressure is completely on Golden Guardians, who also, to be fair, won the coins off, selected blue side, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. And this is what they wanted to do. So they're going to have to run back and make a lot of adaptations. Adaptation, the name of the game for the Golden Guardians. We'll see if they can do it as we get ready for game two. For now, though, we're going to toss it to a quick break. When we return, the analyst desk to talk all about that game one and look ahead to game two.